following the timeline of the dynasties, we have been looking at the period of disunity. And that is resolved in the sense that China is reunified in the Sui dynasty. And it's in the Sui dynasty and then its successor, the great Tang dynasty, one of the golden ages in Chinese history, that we start to see a specifically Chinese style of Buddhist art. So I'm contrasting on this slide what we've seen already, our earliest precisely dated image of Buddha, to this altar to Amitabha Buddha, made in the Sui dynasty. So I'm doing so to sh uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One is, of course, to talk about the style, this new Chinese style, but also to underline the fact that this artwork represents Amitabha Buddha, not Shakyamuna, Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni, the sage of the lion clan, is Siddhartha Gautama, who became the Buddha. Amitabha is a figure, a, a Buddha, a Buddha, not the historical Buddha, in Mahayana Buddhism. So Amitabha Buddha is also known as the Buddha of the Western Pure Land, which the textbook describes as a paradise into which his followers were promised rebirth. So that is distinct from the teachings of the historical Buddha. That is a new development. And we will see a great popularity of Amitabha, Amitabha Buddha and the Western Pure Land, a, transcend, a transcendent realm of peace and splendor. We'll see that when we look at the Dunhuang Caves. This is a cave painting. In terms of a Chinese style, the distinctive artistic sensibility that we see in Buddhist art in China that emerges in the Sui dynasty, we can talk about the material, right? This is bronze, and we know that bronze has been a precious metal since the Zhou dynasty, associated with contact with the spiritual realm, with the guidance of the ancestors. So it's very appropriate in terms of Chinese cultural traditions to apply it to a representation of Amitabha Buddha. And just as we saw in Shang and Zhou dynasty bronzes, there are these amazing intricate details, the, the kind of intricate ornamentation is very different than what we saw in South Asia. And then I also want to kind of emphasize, look at the curves here, the curves, look at how all that intricacy contributes to these dynamic flowing lines, which to my eye, bring to mind the idea in painting of the chi, the spirit consonants, the flow of energy that gives an animated feeling. So here in this slide, I'm showing you another Chinese artwork, another bronze, that's right before the Sui Dynasty. Um, we're still in a period of disunity. But in terms of the evolving Chinese style, we certainly see how that luxurious ornamental material is being used here. And we see this kind of slender elegance that's going to be a feature, although that will not always be the case. We'll talk about how the body will kind of have, the body will have different forms, um, a different style, but definitely the flowing line, the flowing lines of the drapery, the kind of, the mandorlas, the body halos that look like leaves, right? The fact that they're like leaves this with this little point gives it a quality of curvaceous energy. The drapery is often called the waterfall drapery because it just has these marvelous cascading layers. And the body sort of disappears under that. That is very different than what we saw with our beautiful, famous Gupta Buddha which was highly influential and definitely informed early Buddhist art in China. But that had a very clear sense of the body. The drapery was very sort of simple, restrained. So we're seeing how the story of art history is so much about traditions and their transformation. 
So we have a tradition of Buddhist sculpture and it is being transformed in China to fit with the Chinese traditions that already exist.